a moment of silence. Let's keep our troops in our prayer that they come home safe. Thank you. That is a pleasant flag. The notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-10, has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood. Here. Freeholder Belante. Freeholder Kenny. Here. Freeholder Polos. Here. Freeholder Tamaro. Here. Freeholder Valenti. Here. Freeholder Director Rios. Here. Some recognitions. Yes, we have a few recognitions this evening. First is pro uh, proclamation declaring April 2016 Autism Awareness Month. <coughs> Next is recognizing the Woodbridge Wizards girls basketball team on winning the Freeholder Tournament. Next is recognizing the 10th anniversary of the New Jersey Senior Olympics. Next is recognizing Workers Memorial Day 2016. And last is recognizing the American Legion Post 471 Annual Award Ceremony. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Motion by Freelder Valente, second by Freelder Tamara. Roll call. <coughs> Freelder Armwood? Yes. Freelder Kenny? Yes. Freelder Polos? Yes. Freelder Tamara? Yes. Freelder Valente? Yes. Freelder Director Rios? Yes. Okay. Presentation is yep. freeholder yes. Charlie Kenny and freeholder Blanquita Valenti. Thank you. If I could have the parents and uh, the kids come on up. The uh, freeholder board is uh, taking this opportunity to um, get the word out there about Autism Awareness Month here in the month of uh, April. And so I'm going to read the resolution here. Well, I'm going to have Freeholder Valenti uh, read the resolution. Uh, Freeholder Valenti, um, as you know, chairs our, so our social, social services, and she does a fantastic job. She has a caring and passion for the job. And this is just one of the many um, areas that our social services uh, cover. So, Freeholder Valenti. Thank you, Freeholder. Whereas autism is a pervasive developmental disorder affecting the social, communications, and behavioral skills of those affected by it, and whereas as more health professionals become proficient in diagnosing autism, more children are being diagnosed on the autism spectrum, resulting in rates as high as one in 68 children nationally and one in 45 in New Jersey. And whereas more children will be diagnosed with autism this year than with AIDS, diabetes, or cancer combined, and whereas while there is no cure for autism, it is well documented that if individuals with autism receive early and intensive treatment throughout their lives, they lead significantly improved lives. And whereas individuals with autism often require a lifetime of specialized and community support services to ensure their health and safety and to support families' resilience as they manage the psychological and financial burdens autism can present. Whereas parents of autistic children, a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the lives of children and adults with autism, provides scientifically based training to parents, teachers, and other direct service providers and supports an ongoing quality research in the causes of autism, the symptoms, prevention, and a potential cure. <clears throat> and whereas Middlesex County has a long-standing commitment to the health, safety, and development of people with autism, as demonstrated through the allocation of funds through the Office of Human Services Support Grants, the Office of Aging and Disabled Services and Sheriff's Office Collaboration on Project Lifesaver, and the Office of Health Services Children's Special Health Services Program. Uh, now, therefore, our director, Ronald Rios, uh, of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of Middlesex, do hereby proclaim April 2016 as National Autism Awareness Month and urge all our employees and residents to become better educated about autism and create a better community for individuals with autism. 
and it was a, it's being adopted tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Freeholder Valenti. Um, just the efforts of the Freeholder Board um, to get the word out, as was read here at the end. We've uh, put the autism flag, I believe for the first time, up on the flagpole here at the County Administration Building. So those coming to the County Courthouse, those coming to the County Administration Building, and those coming to the State Theater, or anywhere in uh, New Brunswick in this area, um, see it, they recognize it, and hopefully they go back and they learn more about autism. And so at this time, what I'd like to do is have somebody come up and speak about the walk that we just held, uh, that was just held in Seawarn, and also um, any other ways that people can get involved in, uh, you know. That's right. He wants to sit in the big chair. That's right. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Mary Carafer. I am, I am from Woodbridge. Um, this past Sunday, uh, the PACE Parents Organization, which is a uh, PTO associated with the uh, extended school year program in Woodbridge, um, sponsored for, I believe, the fourth year in a row, a uh, fundraising walk uh, for POAC. POAC stands for Parents of Autistic Children. Uh, they are headquartered in Brick. Uh, they were established sometime in the 1990s. Um, and their main mission is to educate uh, people, the community, about uh, autism, about people, families, children with autism. Uh, they will uh, s sponsor training programs for uh, police, fire, EMT departments, uh, teachers, educational staff. They sponsor recreational activities for the children where um, you know, we go swimming, there's horseback riding, there's trampoline jumping, but um, that's done in an environment where, you know, the kids can be whatever they are, whoever they are, act however they need to act at that time. Um, so uh, that was our walk on Sunday. We had fantastic weather. We raised over $30,000, um, had a couple of hundred people there on the grounds of Matthew Jago School in Woodbridge. Uh, POAC sponsors uh, walks, uh, about four or five other walks throughout the state. Um, if you need any information about them, if you know uh, a neighbor or a family member who uh, is dealing with autism, they, they are a tremendous resource and you can um, contact them through www.poac.net. Um, but uh, autism, uh, it can be challenging to live with someone with autism. Um, for example, here we have uh, two uh, teenage girls who are 16 and 17 and who are managing to stand here rather quietly. Um, <laughs> you know, four or five, six years ago, that probably wouldn't have happened, uh, where we have Ryan, who is a little bit younger, who wants what he wants. And, but I think in a few years, he's going to be standing here quietly too, because he's being trained by um, educational professionals um, who know their stuff. Um, he happens to be at Matthew Jago School. And, um, you know, throughout the Woodbridge Township School District, and I hope many other school districts uh, in the state, um, there are people who are learning and teaching us families um, how to deal with this. And um, we just need more of that, more education, more people working with our children. Um, and there can be a better tomorrow. Thank you. Ryan, Ryan, how about if I give you the resolution? All right. I'm going to give you the. Nope. I just want to. I just want to add, uh, as Mary said, Erica is also part of the high school choir. Yes. And so um, during the holidays, she was part of the choir and part of the singing. And so, it, you know, it's about a better tomorrow. So I'm going to give you the resolution. Yeah. I'm not going to be in it for a minute. Okay. Thank you, ladies, gentlemen, for coming.
Brian, you want to get your picture taken? That's what he just asked for. Take a picture in the big chair. Okay. Okay, right, right. Ready? Whoever wants to get in the photo. All right, Jess, you want to get in? All right. Yeah, right. Doesn't work, they don't turn it on for me. I will play. <laughs> I took one, Ryan. We took a picture. Oops, I did. Come on, I'll show you. Ryan. Charlie, you want to come up here? The next group we're going to honor is um, the Woodbridge Wizards girl, be, girls basketball team. And I'm going to have Freehold of Tamaro, who is in charge of our basketball tournament, and um, the county parks uh, read the resolution. Girls, you want to come on up? Whereas it has come to the attention of the board and chosen freeholders of the Middlesex County that the Woodbridge Wizard girls basketball team is worthy of special recognition for winning the 2016 Woodbridge Mayor's Tournament and the 2016 Freeholders Tournament. And whereas the Woodbridge Wizard girls basketball team is made up of girls from various Woodbridge Township middle schools. Four of the girls are from Island Middle School and they won the 2016 Woodbridge Township Middle School Basketball Tournament. And whereas the Wizard Girls basketball team is led by coaches that do, that do not have any players on the team. This shows how dedicated the coaches are to the team and, and the team responded by coaching it has been successful. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Millsex that we hereby congratulate the entire Woodbridge Wizards girls basketball team and their coaches for their tremendous season and extend them to our best wishes and commend and continue success. Congratulations, girls. Any of, uh, any of you girls want to come up here and say what it was like to play in the tournament in like uh, one minute? Like a one-minute drill. Come on, you 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 were giving me the mouth before. Come on, <laughs> talk talk about the coach, talk about the tournament. Um, so when we first came to play, none of us really knew each other except for the four Island girls, and that was kind of it's always difficult not just for our team but for other basketball teams to kind of like learn the fundamentals together and work together as a team. But with the coaches' help and which with our personalities, um, we're very outgoing by the way, and. <laughs> We, we always work together and that like also helps on the court and with teamwork because like we all believe that with teamwork anything could get done and you know we're all student athletes and student comes first so if anything like before practice we'll help each other with homework or anything like that and we're just a big family so and we thank our coach right here he he's just amazing um, thank you for all the ice cream that you give us <laughs> and we're just very blessed to be here today, so thank you. Coach, would you like to add anything? Coach, would you like to add anything? You're going on to another tournament. You want to tell us about that real quick? I'm not sure about another tournament. Okay. You might be going on to another tournament. All right. Angel? Yeah, so I would like to thank the freeholders for recognizing the girls for having this award. So thank you so much for um, us having the, the time because I know you have a full agenda ahead of you tonight but one thing I just want to give a shout out is Woodbridge Township Mayor John McCormick who has you know supported the youth in our township and it really has um, did a lot in our township with our school gyms to be able to provide a youth recreational sport of basketball <clears throat> and you know our mission as far as as a league is concerned is that we do want to empower our girls as far as having a lot of sports you know soccer kills us a lot because of the the high membership but you know we do instill our kids as far as this game of basketball with teamwork and trusting each other um, so again thank you so much to our uh, township mayor and the council for um, always supporting youth recreation and again freeholders thank you so much for this recognition for them thank you 
I'm just going to just add to that real quick. Um, it's a partnership between the Township Administration and the Board of Education. Uh, a lot of the programs, programs like this had been stopped for the longest time uh, because of funding. And so they found a way to get the funds, to get the programs back open. We've not only opened it up in the high schools, and I use the royal we when I say that because I'm from Woodbridge. Um, they've also opened it up in the middle schools to open up uh, programs for middle school, middle school, middle school kids, right? Alexis, I never studied like that when you saw me, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see what we have here. We have the resolutions. Make sure that they're okay. So, Freeholder Tamara, you want to come back here for a photo? Okay, sure. <laughs> I have a broken leg. <laughs> Anniversary of the Senior Olympics, Freehold yeah. Kenny. Yes, Freehold of Tamara, you want to join me again? Freehold of Valencia, you want to come up? Sure, <laughs> Covers both of your departments. Uh, I'm going to have uh, Pat Trimbetta and Frank St. Marie come up here. They are the representatives for the Woodbridge Senior Olympics, and they're going to give you a brief description of what the Senior Olympics is all about. It's a program for our seniors, including me, those over 50. Um, all the way up to, Pat will tell you how old the oldest participant is when he speaks probably. Um, and then they, they also, when this started 10 years ago, the county was really involved because they used a lot of our uh, parks for uh, bocce ball and horseshoes and softball and, and other programs. And with Larry Marowitz in the parks department under uh, Ralph Albanier at that time, Rick Lear at this time, you know, they, they worked very uh, hand in hand with the township and the senior Olympic organizers to uh, be able to provide uh, these programs for the seniors that come in from all around the state. So it's not only uh, it's not only a wonderful uh, program for our seniors; it's a wonderful program for our county because we get to show it off too to others from throughout the state. So I'm going to let Frank St. Marie start. He's going to tell you a little bit about the uh, about the Senior Olympics coming up in September, and Pat Trimbetta will be the closer. Frank. Thank you, John. Good evening. Uh, my name is Frank St. Marie co-chair of the uh, New Jersey Senior Olympics. Um, I'd like to thank uh, this opportunity to, to inform all the New Jersey seniors 50 years plus. And uh, we do have uh, one athlete that's 102 years old that plays bocce. Wow. Wonderful, very good shape, and he will be attending this year, God willing. Uh, the past 10 years, Woodbridge Township has been hosting the New Jersey Senior Olympics under the uh, administration of Mayor John McCormick. Uh, this very successful event with over 1,500 to 2,000 athletes coming from all over the state attending will be held on September 9, 10, and 11. Opening ceremony will be September the 10th at 10 a.m. at the Woodbridge Community Center. More information can be obtained uh, from our website and our uh, hotline. Pat will give you that shortly. Uh, at this time, I would like to uh, extend, it would be our very pleasure, that the uh, entire uh, board uh, will attend our uh, opening ceremonies September the 10th at 10 a.m. and again, it's at the Woodbridge Community Center. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. My name is Pat Trombetta, co-chair person for the New Jersey Senior Olympics, representing Woodbridge Township, the best town around, as our mayor would say, Mayor McCormick. Uh, 
quickly tonight, I like to go to the venues that are involved with the Senior Olympics. And uh, the only outside event we have is archery, which takes place in Brookdale Park, Bloomfield, New Jersey, at our beautiful uh, Woodbridge Community Center. We have basketball three on three. We have basketball foul and accuracy sh shooting, bocce, billiards, which is my, my, my preference. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pool shooter. Uh, darts, uh, miniature golf, beautiful miniature golf course right, course right behind the Woodbridge Community Center, horseshoes, and swimming. The club at Woodbridge gives a whole weekend uh, giving us racquetball and tennis. The Sapola brothers do a wonderful job over there and they give us the whole weekend. Woodbridge Bowling Center, bowling. Avenel Middle School, we're gonna bring cricket into the Olympics, we started it last year. We have the people for it at this point, it's going over very successful. So we're gonna do cricket there, brand new cricket field, and also volleyball in the gym. Colonial Country Club, we're gonna do our golf. Warren Park, the county park, we're gonna do pickleball and team softball. What, 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 what support we've been getting over there from Larry May was on this project, thanks to the county for Warren Park. Woodbridge High School, track and field, table tennis and fencing. Woodbridge Center, cycling. Location, Boscobs parking lot. We do that on a Sunday morning when the mall is shut down. We do that like eight in the morning to about 11 in the morning. Um, the website, which we encourage people to go to register on, will be opening up May 1st will be www.NewJerseySeniorOlympics.com. The hotline, 24 hours you can call that hotline, and you'll be, uh, ask any questions you want about the Olympics, and somebody will be getting back to you. That number is 973-618-1111. Uh, what does it cost to be in these, uh, in these uh, uh, sport, sport participations? Uh, all, we, all you need is $30, and it represents three sporting events. And that means uh, any, any event you want to go into. Golf is separate. It's an $80 fee for golf, but you, but you get uh, comp complimentary bre breakfast in the morning and the lunch in the afternoon. And the shirts that I'm wearing, any participant, 50 and over, will be getting these college shirts free. So how can you, how can you go wrong? <laughs> what, what we're also doing, uh, we started that in Woodbridge, Woodbridge Township under Mayor McCormick. We're giving everybody in Woodbridge Township a $30, actually $30 for three sporting events. We're giving them $25 discount. They pay $5, okay? But what Mayor McCormick did, he reached to all the mayors in the state of New Jersey, sending them a letter saying, why don't you, why don't you offer that to your seniors too? A lot of mayors have been responding, maybe not as much as Woodbridge at this point, because we do it for everybody in Woodbridge, but they're, well, they're coming on, and I would like to see that because uh, some of the seniors could use the help. But uh, I'm really proud to be here tonight, proud to be part of Woodbridge Township, and part of, to be part of the great New Jersey Senior Olympics. Thanks for having me. And this isn't an easy uh, process to put on. We have... Uh, they have many volunteers that come out, volunteers from the high school who come out for the whole weekend to be judges and to help assist those participating in the program um, throughout our township and throughout the county parks that are involved. So Frank and Pat do a great job. It's a year-round job. They, they go year-round. Believe me, these guys are talking about Senior Olympics. As soon as the last this one ends, they'll start the next one. This year's a qualifying year, correct? Yes. And a qualifying year means that if you win... Go to Alabama. Gold or silver, you go to Alabama next year. Gold, al gold, or, al uh, gold or silver, you can go to Alabama next year for the Nationals. Um, and it's, it's, it's really amazing to, to see the participants that are out there. One, one year we were having it, and um, it was hot and humid. I'm going to say it was about 85 degrees, and it was still in the morning, and it was humid. I was sweating just watching. And there was a gentleman running on the track, and he had to be doing over a mile. I think it might have been the miler or, or a little bit over. And I'm guessing his age was close to about 78, 79 years old. And, you know, uh, the, the shit with the shame, after he was done, I left. Because, you know, it's just amazing to see the athletes out there exercising and doing what they're doing. And it, and it helps gets our, keeps our seniors going, you know. So it's fantastic. Let me just uh, – I'm going to present you guys with a 
resolution. Thank you. And whereas it has come to the attention of Middlesex County Board of Chosen Freeholders that Woodbridge Township is worthy of a special recognition for holding for hosting the New Jersey Senior Olympic Games for the 10th consecutive year. And whereas Woodbridge Township is proud to host the New Jersey Senior Olympics on September 9th, 10th, and 11th, 2016, more than 1,000 seniors, senior Olympians from around the state will visit Woodbridge Township to participate in the three-day Olympic competition. The sporting event this year will be archery, basketball, uh, basketball, foul shooting, accuracy, basketball, three-on-three, -three, bocce, billiards, bowling, cricket, cycling, darts, fencing, golf, horseshoes, miniature golf, pickleball, and just in case you're wondering, there's no pickles involved in pickleball. So there's no sitting around afterwards and eating any of the equipment. Um, swimming, table tennis, team softball, tennis, track and field, and volleyball. Whereas after the competition, athletes, spectators, families, and friends are invited to enjoy an evening in Woodbridge Township or anywhere in Middlesex County. They can explore the local downtown business district or, and buy local. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Chosen Freeholders, Middlesex County, we hereby recognize and thank Woodbridge Township for hosting the New Jersey Senior Olympic Games. And this is signed by the Freeholder Board. And gentlemen, thank you for thank what you, you do for you. bringing people into Middlesex thank County and Woodbridge Township. Thank you very much. So, thank you so much. want to get a photo real quick? I'd like to thank Frank and Pat for being involved in taking care of the Senior Olympics. Uh, I've gotten to know them over the last eight years, and they're a tag team. They're always together. You would think they were brothers, and, uh, and I'm sure they feel about each other that, like they're brothers. But thank you for what you do. Thank you very much. Correspond Correspondence. Uh, each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, second by Fielder Tamara. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Minutes for approval. Um, the Board of Chosen Freeholders regular meeting, April 7, 2016, 7 o'clock p.m. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, second by Fielder Tamara. Roll call. Fielder Armwood? Yes. Fielder yes. Kenny? Fielder Polos? Yes. Fielder Tamara? Yes. Fielder Valenti? Yes. Fielder Director Rios? Yes. Reports of Freeholders. Fielder Ken Armwood. Thank you, Fielder Director. For our Votech schools, three Middlesex County Votech schools, again ranked among top U.S. public high schools who profiles more than 28,000 high schools across the 50 states and the District of Columbia. U.S. News and World Report has, has, been, has recognized an, as national blue ribbon schools of excellence, including Academy for Science, Mathematics, and Engineering Technologies in Edison received the gold medal recognition for the fourth consecutive year ranking seventh among New Jersey public high schools and 167th nationally. The Academy for Allied Health and Biomedical Sciences in Woodbridge received gold medal recognition ranking 12th among New Jersey high schools and 258th nationally. And the Perth Amboy Votech received a bronze medal for the second year in a row. From the Office of Workforce Development, the annual spring job fair will be held on Thursday, May 12th at Middlesex County College from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. More than 80 employers are participating in the job fair to conduct interviews for employment. Interested employers contact 732-745-3970 to participate. Year to date, 30 students have completed their high school equivalency and will be participating in a June 14th graduation at Middlesex County College. From the Office of Culture and Heritage, Taste of New Jersey Diners is a free event on Sunday, April 24th, 1 to 4 p.m. at the County Museum, Cornelius Lau House, 1225 River Road, Piscataway. Michael Gabriel, guest curator 
and author of The History of New Jersey Diners, will reminisce and answer questions, and you can taste examples from three local diners, the Fountain Blue in Piscataway, the Somerset in Somerset, and the Colonial in East Brunswick. Experience and understand the lore of these New Jersey institutions. Register at 732-745-3030. Archaeology and the Delaware Indians, a 12,000-year odyssey, free event on April 23rd, 2 p.m. at the Lodge at Thompson Park, 1701 Perrineville Road in Jamesburg, with historian Richard Veet who will examine the rich American Indian heritage through archaeological case studies. Register at 732-745-4489. From Africa to the New World, master drummer Victor Marshall and his percussion ensemble bring African rhythms to life. Free event on Saturday, April 30th at 2.30 p.m. at the Plainsboro Recreation and Culture Center, Cultural Center, 641 Plainsboro Road in Plainsboro. Register at 732-745-4489. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Fielder Armour. Fielder Charlie Kenny. I think I had enough time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Fielder H. James Polis. Thank you, Director. A couple quick items. We began training this past week, or I guess it was two weeks ago, uh, for the volunteers who are going to be participating in our inflatable boat task force. This is the project that we've been working on for some time now. We finally got into getting through the training mechanisms. I think they were in the pool, correct, Mike, a couple of weeks ago. And then uh, those who are going to be trained to a higher level are actually going to be doing some open water drills and training in another month or so. We're going to let the water warm up a little bit for them before we take them out into a river. But the point of it is is that we'll end up having a great task force of lightweight inflatable boats to be able to respond to any type of water emergency in the county or any flooding condition. It's going to be a great new asset for the county and one that we currently do not have. And we'll be able to deploy it in a timely fashion using the volunteer forces and some of our own county staff as well throughout the county. We're doing a pilot program through the uh, our county uh, jail and through the Board of Social Services with a nonprofit NJAC to uh, try to pilot a system whereby we're going to be able to pre qualify inmates who are going to be coming out into our reentry system for any Board of Social Services programs that they may be eligible for. This is a big step forward in the past. We weren't able to provide that service. It created somewhat of a disconnect for some of these individuals who are coming out. Uh, and we believe, again, from a pure public safety standpoint, that it's the right thing to do to try to prepare these individuals who are coming out of our county prison, get them back into the, into, uh, the mainstream uh, so that we reduce recidivism and also reduce any public safety issues within the county. So kudos to our warden and to uh, the Board of Social Services for <coughs> kicking off this new initiative. We're also in the process of really implementing now some of the radio conversions, our portable and mobile radio conversions within our emergency services. This is coming as a result of the improvements that we've made to the actual transmission capability within our net of transmission within the county. I can tell you that the feedback of members of the board has already been significantly positive in the increase in capabilities of our people to be able to speak to each other clearly the improvement in communications capability. I think MCAT is next up on, on the board to do. Am I right, Mike? So we are really making some great progress, but to hear the actual users, and that was the whole purpose we invested as much as we did, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, is to make sure that we had the best system, uh, the clearest technology, and the best ability to give these individuals who are out on the front line the proper safety net. They see and actually hear a physical difference in the way the system operates. So. Again, thank you for the support that you've given to us on that all along the way. In another week or so, we will have, on May 1st, we'll be celebrating Orthodox Christmas, uh, Orthodox Easter, I should say, for the 300 million Orthodox Christians who are around the world. So uh, as a Greek Orthodox Christian, we say uh, at this point, Kalianastasi, which is uh, to have a good, uh, a good uh, holiday, a good religious holiday, and of course, Kalopaska and George. I don't know if George is still here or not. I know George would be joining me in that. So, again, best wishes to everyone for a happy and healthy Easter. And Passover as well, which begins, and I believe, a this few Friday, days, if I'm not mistaken. This Friday. Friday. So, thank you, Field of Poles. Field of Charlie tomorrow. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. And I'm happy to say our parks are in full of activity. And this week has been what spring is all about. I know you, you will be thrilled when you get out to the county parks 
and find all the new improvements that have taken place while the harsh winter kept many indoors. In this past year, we installed six new playgrounds with innovative new play surfaces at Roosevelt Park in Edison and Johnson Park in uh, Piscataway. These play playgrounds brightened the park with vibrant colors and new shapes and designs. This week in particular, children have been present in, present in large numbers and it gives me great satisfaction for Middlesex County to provide these wonderful accommodations to the families that get out and enjoy the rejuvenated county park system. And don't forget at Roosevelt Park, we also have new basketball and tennis courts with LD, LED lighting uh, for your pleasure at night. Spring is also a great time to enjoy Middlesex County Greenway. This, year, this time of the year is the most beautiful for bike riding, jogging, or just strolling along and enjoying nature on this paved trail. If you're interested in more rugged hiking, the Middlesex County Conservation Corps has been busy cleaning and remapping over 30 miles of marked trails throughout the park system. Each trail is listed on the county website, and there are trails in almost every town in the county. Get out and enjoy nature this spring. And don't forget this weekend, Saturday, April, don't forget the next weekend, Saturday, April 30th, the Middlesex County Conservation Corps is hosting its annual spring beach sweeps this year at the Old Bridge Waterfront Park. Hundreds of volunteers will donate their Saturday morning to join the beach cleanup. These events are hugely popular and we are hoping for another successful event this year. If you would like to be a volunteer, the hours are 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The Conservation Corps section of the Middlesex County website provides all the information you need. Scott Myler's uh, can be contacted at 732-745-3064 for additional details. And finally, coming up soon, Jan June 11th, everyone can participate in the Pancreatic Cancer 5K Walk at Roosevelt Park. Please come walk or run to help us find a cure to make advancement in research for pancreatic cancer. For more information, call 732-745-4484. Have a great time this spring and enjoy the county park system. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Phil. It's Mayor Fielder Blanquita Valenti. Thank you, Fielder Director from the Department of Community Services. Throughout the month of May, Middlesex County will once again host a series of birthday bashes to celebrate county residents age 90 and older. Each birthday bash includes a delicious lunch and lively entertainment and provides us with the opportunity to celebrate the con contributions and achievements made by this great generation. Over the years, the popularity of the birthday bashes has grown with nearly now 150 seniors participating each year. Each participant is invited to bring one guest. A few spots are still available, but registration is required and guests are asked to attend the location designated for their municipality. Residents age 90 and over who should like to attend are asked to call the Office of Aging and Disabled Services at 732-745-4267. Uh, also, I would like to recognize and congratulate the members of the Partial Care Program at the George J. Adolowski Center for Mental Health Care who participated in the recent Art and Talent Show. The event featured a band, singers, dramatic readings, and of course, all of the wonderful artwork done in a variety of mediums. The event was a great way to highlight the lifelong talent of some of the participants and to encourage the emerging talent of others. And that's my report. Director. Thank you, Fiorda Valenti. Okay, Mr. Kelso, any resolutions to be added? There are none. Any resolutions to be amended? There are none. Any resolutions to be held? There are none. Any resolutions to be voided? There are none. At this time, I'd like to open up the meeting to the public on any resolutions listed on the agenda. State mm -hmm. your name, address, mm -hmm. and you have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, freeholders. My name is Charles Cradiville. I am from New Brunswick. I'm the editor of uh, New Brunswick Today community newspaper here. My questions are about 16-506R is the resolution on page 7. Uh, just in the interest of time, can you confirm this is the three boarded up houses on Welton Street and they're being purchased uh, to further the development of a park? Is that correct? That's the... Uh yeah, which, which 506 506 on page 7 it's it, yeah. well so yeah it's yes. Uh, yes yeah okay and can you tell me uh, has there been an appraisal done of the site yeah. yes done. yes and the appraisal recommended 234,000 that's go ahead, Tom. 
My, my recollection is the appraisal uh, was for the larger site and ultimately the contract that was negotiated only is acquiring a portion of the site. And so this number is a pro rata portion of whatever that appraisal was. So, so, but it is based on an appraisal, yes. Okay, and so <coughs> so based on that, so it's is it the three houses or is it only two of the houses or? My recollection is that it's all three lots, but some of the property is still being retained by Prab in order to do a, a, their own recreational component. Okay, so Prab is getting paid up to $234,000, and they're also getting to keep part of the land. But we're, all, but we're only paying for the portion that we are acquiring. I uh, understood, understood. Can you tell me, are, are there any liens on any of those properties for uh, violations? I don't believe there are any liens, but if there were, they would have to be satisfied prior to our acquiring title in any case. That's understood. the only way to acquire good title. Understood. I, I, I'm just curious if anybody's looked into it, because these properties are among the... the uh, you know, biggest eyesores in the, in the area. The, the the answer to that is whenever a property is being acquired, and in this case it's, it is handled by the Middlesex County Improvement Authority through the Wilentz Law Firm, so I don't have the title search I haven't reviewed. But whenever a property is acquired, in order to do so, we need to acquire title insurance. And in order to get title insurance, you must have clear title. And the reason to do the property search is to make certain that if there are any of those liens, that those liens are satisfied out of the proceeds. Okay. Can you tell me, has anybody looked into if the site's contaminated at all? That certainly was done as part of the due diligence. That's correct. And uh, what was the verdict? I don't know if there was, but in any case, if there was any type of contamination, whether it was an underground uh, fuel oil tank or anything of that nature, it would need to be remediated before closing. Okay. So um, you know, these seem like things that we would want to know before our freeholders are asked to vote on whether or not to, to, to buy this land. but. Those just, things are known, Charlie. Whether or not they have them in the top of their head to be able to answer them, they are all part of the contract that was reviewed by council, by the MCIA, and was made as part of a presentation <coughs> about a month ago from council to the MCIA to this board during a consent, uh, to, during a uh, uh, agenda meeting. Yes, yes, I, I, I recall, and I, I'm just, you know, it makes it hard to make good decisions if you don't have the information when you're making the decision. And so if nobody in this room can say if the property is contaminated or not, then the votes will take place without that knowledge. Uh, that, that's really an unfair characterization of what occurs. This is the last step of, of, of the contract being approved when all the information was provided to the freeholders and as part of a presentation. Okay, so can one of the freeholders please tell me, is this contaminated? The answer to your question is an environmental assessment was made of the property, and to the extent that the property has any remediation required, it's a requirement of the seller prior to closing, which is what protects the county and what satisfies every type of property we acquire through the due diligence process. So to be clear, the freeholders are about to vote to purchase uh, 9,500 square feet of land in our city, New Brunswick. Uh, at the taxpayer expense of $234,000, and none of the freeholders can say whether or not the property is contaminated or not. You've had the answer to your question, Joe. The answer is no No one is willing to say if it is. That's not what no the one answer is able was. To, no one is able to, to provide that information tonight. Your answer was provided by Mr. Kelso, Mr. Cradiville. Next question. I, I got to say, um, this is. Uh, this is this is unfortunate. This is very unfortunate that um, our leaders aren't leading and uh, trying to find the answers before they they vote on things. But rather, we're just trusting the Willens firm uh, to do it. It's time. And uh, I, I think that's a mistake. You should you should hold this, please. Anyone else in the public that would like to speak on any resolutions listed? It is not contaminated. No, no, no. Well, we couldn't vote. State your name and address, and you have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Ken Bavel, 359 Brook Avenue, Burke Danboy, New Jersey. On, on the same uh, 16506, what appraisal company did that appraisal? I, I don't, don't know. We could was. get that answer for you. I don't know if Rick would have that answer for now. I don't know if he does. Please follow the appraiser. 
provide the appraisal was performed on uh, behalf of the MCIA by the New Jersey Realty Advisory Group. New Advisory Group. Okay. Um, 16, 656, six, R, and 5, 7. Um, 6, 5. 6, 5, 6, 6, 5, 7. Section 8, uh, rental assistant payment contracts. Is that big properties or is that just one property around the county? That's the Section 8 program. Yes. Is there a total amount here? Well, there's 400, we have 400 vouchers that we handle the city of Essex County, but there's also others that get ported in. So um, these are for people that are getting rent paid for this, for this particular. That's so. These rents will be for men. So that's just 404 just for the Middlesex County that this yeah, county takes care of. County handles, but other, other municipalities have their own, like Edison has a Section 8 program, New Brunswick has. So every, those are just the ones Middlesex County can handle. Okay. Um, going back to the appraisal, I mean, does anybody, when you get an appraisal, is there a negotiation? When you go buy a car, there's a sign that says, what's the number? 21000 Anybody go buys a car, they negotiate a price. Now, I've seen another appraisal on another piece of property for a damn boy where the exact amount of number on that appraisal is what they got. Now, it's the same thing. On these properties, if you can't say whether it's polluted or not, or anything, does anybody negotiate off the appraisal number? Because usually there's two appraisals done, or different appraisals done. So does anybody negotiate off the appraisal number? Because even when you buy a house, anybody that buys a house on their, for themselves, there's an appraisal on the house, there's a price on the house, people negotiate it. Did this board negotiate these property, this price, down, or did they... Are you speaking on a specific resolution? Yeah, the one one before, 506. I went back to the 506 no, and the appraisal. The 506, in, in this particular case, if I recall, the appraised value that the county's appraisal came up with was the number that was used to acquire the property. Okay. When they did that, and I've seen another appraisal done from the NCII on another property in Burke Danboy, it was at a clean piece of property, it said. It didn't say whether it was polluted, it didn't say what anything. It says they appraised at a clean piece of property at that appraisal. So when, if anybody looked at this appraisal, was that appraisal, was it a clean piece of property or did they do an environmental study with it? The, the appraisals are always based upon the assumption that the property is clean. Therefore, if there is a requirement to remediate the property, the cost of that is borne by the seller, either prior to closing or it comes out of the proceeds. So that the property is being acquired for a value that represents it being a clean property. So, but you go off that number that the appraisal, nobody negotiates that number off the appraisal. Well, we, we never, I've never recalled a situation where we've paid uh, something that's less than our appraisal because typically the seller's appraisal will be higher. So if there is a negotiation, and sometimes there is a negotiation, there may be a circumstance where we acquire a property for a number somewhat higher than our appraisal, but never in a circumstance do I recall having paid less than what our appraisal is. That's the purpose of us getting that appraisal. No, I understand it, but when you buy a piece of property just like you buy a car, you negotiate. But if you're asking us to negotiate off of our appraisal, you're asking us to pay more than our appraisal oh, because okay. you're never going to pay less because the other appraisal is always going to be more. Not all the time. Yes. Anyone else in the public? Move to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by Field of Tamau, second by Field of Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Kelso. I think we have some freeholder yeah, director. Sorry. Yes, I, I'd like to ask for uh, file number 16-506R to be uh, separated for a separate vote, please. And so do I. Yes. And mine is 16-605. Okay. Uh, yes, field of director, then a motion would be in order to adopt a consent agenda consisting of resolution number 16-593 through 16-669, including resolution 16-506, which was previously held, and excluding resolution 16-506 and 16-605 to be voted upon separately. Is there a motion? Motion. 
Second. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder yes. Kenny? Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder <coughs> Director Rios? Yes. Now, Director, it would be appropriate to consider Resolution 16506, which was excluded by both Freeholder Armwood and Freeholder Valenti. Is there a motion? Motion to adopt. Second. Motion by Freeholder Tamaro, second by Freeholder Kenny. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Present, not voting. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Present, not voting. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. And now, uh, Freeholder Director, it would be appropriate to consider Resolution 16 605, which was excluded by Freeholder Tamaro. So moved. Second. Motion by Freeholder Polos, seconded by Freeholder Valenti. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. yes. Freeholder Kenny? Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Present, not voting. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freel the director Rios. Yes. This time I'd like to open up the meeting to the public. State your name and address and you have five minutes. Good evening once again. My name is Charles Cradiville. I'm from New Brunswick. I'm the editor of New Brunswick Today and we've been exposing some of the things going on here in Middlesex. People can read our newspaper online and in print. It's, in, it's free and it's in two different languages and most of the county government acknowledges it. Um, I got to ask, are, are you still involved in the Puerto Rican Action Board, sir, the uh, Mr. Freeholder Director? No. No, you're not you're not involved anymore? I'm not a member of the board, no. Okay. Um, I think now we, we might know why the freeholders uh, rushed to adopt this um, 506 resolution. Um, <coughs> there's at least two members that, are, that had to recuse themselves from it. Uh, is that correct? Uh, Freeholder Armwood, you, you, you had to recuse yourself from this, or was this a, your choice to just abstain? No, I recuse myself. I'm a board member on the Puerto Rican Action Board. Okay. Hi. And okay, so two of the freeholders are also on the board of the organization uh, that you're, you've now agreed to, to buy their land, and, and no one here could say if it was contaminated before you made that decision. I think that um, really looks poor. I have one question to ask about another matter, and then I have uh, just a, a comment to make. I'd like to ask if. Um, when was the county notified that the New Brunswick Parking Authority was going to reopen the Wolfson parking garage? Were, was the county ever notified? Actually, what occurred when the agreement was reached with the parking authority and there was a, we moved to closing it was the discussions that occurred through the administrator's office as well as the parking authority that a portion of the garage could still remain open uh, and that the revenues that would be generated would still be shared with the parking authority and the county to accomplish two purposes in order to allow revenues to still be generated which would benefit both the county and the parking authority and also to provide access to parking uh, for what was primarily for the local restaurants and merchants who were concerned about the loss of the parking. So there was an agreement that exists that allows the garage to be utilized through that agreement with the parking authority until such time as the garage is to be demolished, which will occur this summer. Okay, right. But per the parking authority, the deck was closed for good December 31st. It, yes, and, and all the monthly parkers were removed from the garage and relocated to another garage. And then in February, it was reopened. And then as you've probably read in the papers, several people were criminally charged yes, for uh, using this county property uh, and pocketing the, the proceeds. How did that happen? I guess people committed a crime and they're now being prosecuted for it. And I, it seems like the county was a victim of that. So the county was a victim. And can you tell me? Uh, did the county know that the parking authority had reopened the deck for valet purposes? I just indicated to you we entered into an interlocal agreement with the parking authority to provide for that parking to occur, the county of which shares in the revenue, and, and that agreement is a temporary agreement until such time as the garage is to be demolished. Right, I'm talking about 2016, though. The deck closed and then it reopened. Was the county made aware that it was reopened? I don't know how to answer your question other than tell you what happened, and that's what happened. Okay. The, the garage was never technically closed. That agreement was part of the 
closing and the utilization of that ground floor for the purposes of what I've just stated to you is an agreement that was entered into and known to the county. Okay. The county well, field has approved it. Okay. Point. Well, it just it looks very fishy, and I noticed that once again our county prosecutor didn't think it's important enough to be here tonight at this meeting, and uh, <laughs> the county prosecutor's office continues to make blunders. Their public information officer continues to uh, make their problems worse, not better, and. Uh, the last thing I wanted to remind you of is that I'm really looking forward to May because it is uh, uh, the time of year when everyone has to file their financial disclosure form. So this is a public service announcement to everyone watching and everybody here to please remember to fill out your financial disclosure forms before April 30th and to fill it out completely and thoroughly. Um, and to some of the folks who've already filled theirs out, you might want to go back and double check and double check the rules and make sure you actually disclosed everything you were supposed to because come May, I will be filing ethics complaints against people who do not disclose uh, the things that are required of them. And that includes everyone from top to bottom. So I just want to send the message loud and clear. These financial disclosure forms provide Time. an important service to the I'm public sorry. and to Thank the you. press, and you, you owe it to us to fill them out properly. Please do it uh, before the end of the month. Thank you. Sir, if you want to speak, you're going to have to come up to the you got to come up to the microphone, sir, and, and state your name and address. Okay. And you have, right? I'm yeah. sorry? Yeah. General yes. comments. And yeah, you have any, com any comments you, you can one make? Work that one works, yeah. Um, the one right next, right in front of you works. That one, yeah. This one. Yep. Yeah. Kind of. State your name and address, and you have five minutes. Okay. The kids here on a Boy Scout project or something? No, they're here oh, on okay. a public service uh, effort. Oh, very good. Um, we won't need five minutes for all three of us. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Jacob Reagan Angle from Fort Galloway, Edison, and I want to say how Roosevelt Skating Park is helpful and a great place. First of all, Same the. Talk louder. Talk, you have to talk louder, right. son. I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Jacob Reagan Angle from Fort Galloway at Edison, and I want to say how Roosevelt Skating Park is a great place and so fun to play um, skate with. Right. First of all, the um, the staff there they never keep a they never look away when someone gets hurt. Um, they're on guard, and I want to how they're so good at that, and I want to say how the. The Zamboni, um, they make really, the ice is really nice, they make it real clear so everybody can skate on it, and I just want to say that's a good job for them. That's it. Um, my name is Andrew De Silva. I'm from Four Windy Court, Edison, New Jersey, and I'm also here to talk about how great um, Roosevelt Park ice skating rink is also good for ice skating. Um, Reason one is because they have a really good snack bar, so when you're hungry, you can eat. Um, second, um, if your skates are okay, um, okay or not good on the ice, they have sharpen. You can sharpen the skates, and um, they. And that's, that's oh yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> My name is Robert Engel. I uh, live at Four Galloway, and uh, these gentlemen, along with a bunch of their friends, are commonly referred to your county by your county staff as rink rats. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm here. Uh, I meant to do this last year, uh, after spending many, 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 many nights uh, and afternoons at, at the park at the skating facility. Um, I want to tell you that your supervisor of recreation there in charge of rink operations, Tracy Reed, does a fantastic job. Uh, she's assisted by uh, Bob, I don't have a lot of their last names, but Bob, who's a MCIA employee at the, uh, he works at the uh, golf courses during the summer and at the rink in the winter, he cuts the ice, uh, assisted by a Jake, Melissa, Anthony, Adam, Ryan, and Vlad are all skate guards that keep after these little guys. Margaret and Diane are uh, teachers. I, I have to tell you that they do a wonderful job. It's a very family-oriented uh, facility, uh, and I can't say enough about Tracy Reed. She, uh, you know, if she's not telling telling the men how to cut the ice, she may be making sure that the dining room is clean. I have one criticism, and we skate a lot, 
all over the state of New Jersey. I have one criticism of the park. I brought it up uh, to a freeholder last year. Um, didn't ask him to get it done, but uh, just brought it up to him. There's one, uh, one difference in, in the skating rink, in your skating rink, and I've never seen it uh, in any other rink. You have no television. For those of us who don't skate as much as these, but have to, have to remain there to supervise or to watch our children, uh, there is no television. And that's like, I've never seen a rink. I don't think there's a rink in the state of New Jersey without a television. So if you guys could get us a television, ladies and gentlemen, could get us a television, more parents are going to come and bring their kids because we can watch television. Thank you very much. It's a job well done. Thank you. Yeah, they wanted me to remind you that it keeps them out of trouble. <laughs> also, Bob, do you know that we, uh, we put the new surface down so you can roller skate on it, so bring them back for roller skating. We, we have never been there, but we're going to try it. Try it. Okay. You, You're welcome. Ken Ballard, 359 Brook Avenue, Perth Amboy. Um, you bought the Rosen Garrett property to freeholders in Perth Amboy. Uh, General Cable, Rosengard property on High End, Washington Street. There's two fences up there now. There's a clear fence and a green fence. Can anybody tell me, do you, the county owns just a white fence or the white and a green fence, or what part of that park now do they own? Rick? The, uh, the property in question All right, there's two fences. So you bought just an enclosed property without no water rights in there because according to the last council meeting, you turned back five acres or so of property back to the city because you said it was so polluted. The question is, there was also an amendment on the Rosengard property that I believe that there's water seepage into the Rosengard property from somewhere or somewhere around that there's still pollution there. The question is, is it a clean property? Is there a timetable for a park? And what's going to be done there? If you're going to put a park around an environmental site, what good is that going to be? Because the people are going to go past uh, uh, the environmental site. And is it going to seat into the park? Because they're right next to each other. There's a white fence that you put up right next to a green fence. So. How are you going to put a park there if there's going to be seepage and that? And is there a timetable? Does anybody have a timetable when we're going to have a park there? Not let Rick speak again. Certainly, with, with regard to the, the former Dwayne Marine property, um, the, the portion of the property that's required or the county is going to need in order to go ahead and build the park is only in the upland portion. So certainly, that property is both to the upland portion as well as into the water. Looking at the needs that we would require to, to build just the park, um, there was no need for the county to acquire the riparian portion to be that portion out into the water. So, as part of that agreement and with the city of Perth Amboy, they'll retain that riparian portion <coughs> and then we'll go ahead and uh, acquire the piece that we need for the upland portion of the park. Um, so, those two pieces will come together so that we can go ahead and, and bring the park down to the edge of the water you know, once we're completed. So that will give folks that kind of visual access to the work. And then, as I mentioned further, we will retain those repairing rights. Um, as far as your, your, your additional question, your second question about seepage, I'm not familiar with what you're speaking about. So that I don't You're not getting any of the reports? Any environmental property here that has anything gets reports, updates on them. There was a report that came out about six months ago that there was seepage on that property around the property. Now, you own the property now. I believe you should have got a copy of it because the City of Perth Amway Council people got it. So if there's seepage into that property right now, it's not a clean because it was an adjustment 
to an original, original environmental. It was a correction. So maybe I missed it wrong or anything else like that, but, and chemicals, I don't know what it is, but there was a change in that property and there's something seeping, the way they explained it. So if you bought a piece of property that's got seepage in it now, and it's your property, then I guess you're responsible for cleaning that seepage up. No. Again, the condition of that purchase of the property is that we receive it clean and remediated. So if there's any other identified areas of remediation that's required, it is still the seller's responsibility. And I'm sure the county would not put county residents at risk uh, in the event that there was this additional report. Uh, but again, with both the remediation work that's going on there, along with the work with our engineer, uh, I assure you that any responsibility of any type of contamination is the responsibility of the seller. Is there money in escrow? You closed on the property already. Is there money held in escrow? I believe there is, yes. I believe there is, yes. Yes. Did anybody know how the amount of escrow is? No. No. You paid $5 million for the property. You don't know how much the, uh, is it we escrow could for? We could, we could provide that information to you, sir, but we assure you we put enough in escrow to ensure if there's any contamination, it is still That's the time. responsibility of the seller. All right. Thank you. Well, Anyone else in the public? Move to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by Fiola Tamao, second by Fiola Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So Second. Motion by Field of Valenti, second by Field of Tamaro. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting adjourned.